You wanted to see more comparison reviews? Ran internally different segments and we have it here today. For you, the one you wanted to see, Audi A5 versus Audi A7 here with Thomas on Autogefühl for you. We start here directly in the front where you can see the biggest difference is the bigger A7 has a more upright front grille here also in the S-Line Sportia package and in the Glacier White. So here this part is just more upright, looks stronger. We also have a laser light here by the way but both are available with matrix LED. Here you can see the A5 a little bit smaller and the front goes a little bit further down so it looks a little bit smaller. It looks also really prominent, really aggressive on the road. Just in comparison to the A7, it looks a little bit more subtle. Which one is your favorite from the front? 4 meters 73 or 186 inches is the length of the A5 Sportback. There's a coupe, there's a convertible and the Sportback is the five door version here with the rear doors as well and that beautiful fastback line. And the cool thing both with A5 and A7 is that fastback rear hatch where it opens all the way and you can use these both kind of like an estate at the same time you get the great design here with 18 inch wheels here by the way and now it gets really exciting because the length difference between A5 and A7 is 23 centimeters or 9 inches let's take a look here you can indeed see it it's basically also like the top of my fingers to my watch this is then the length difference between the A5 and the A7. It's not that visible when they stand next to each other. Here then at 4 meters 96 overall in length or 195 inches. It is a thing when you're parking in and out that it will be more practical when you have the A5. It's just a little bit short. However, as for the agility and how you can maneuver it, this one, the A7, you can get with rear axle steering and that fakes a shorter wheelbase and kind of makes up for that missing, uh, you know, missing agility maybe or something. We will experience that in the driving part. And to me, both A5 and A7 Sportback and also the A5 Coupe, these are my favorite Audis as for design. They just look awesome. Here also again, exterior S-line, 20 inch wheels here and that stretched roof line. I would like to hear your opinion. Our Thomas B cameraman thinks A5 is even more beautiful. I personally think that the A7, because it's just a little bit longer here, looks more massive and looks more beautiful. I would like to hear your opinion. In the rear, the main difference is that the tail lamps here are split. I have a modern, beautiful design. Overall, very clean. Oh, <whistles> fake exhaust police, AFAP, audio you feel fake exhaust police, because the real ones are on the inside. District green is this color, by the way. <laughs> and on the A7, we have this light strip that goes all the way through. That is to me, um, you know, just more strengthening the width, also a little bit more massive that rear. And a cleaner layout here, sporty honeycomb style in lower parts. So yeah, to me, indeed, I love the A5 design. And the A7 is probably the only comparison where I would say, this one loses to me in design. Well, loses. I found the A7 more beautiful, even more beautiful, but just in this comparison, otherwise the A5 Sportback is also a very beautiful car. Welcome to the interior of the A5 and it's very clean and sporty indeed. Here we have the S-Line interior, beautiful fabric seat here, it's fabric on the inside, really sturdy at the same time, comfortable and also breathable. The thing is that in the US and in the UK, you can get the A5, as far as I checked the configurator, animal leather only. That's of course hit and miss. In Germany, you have a lot of options, not only this, but also for example, with microfiber on the inside. Headroom wise with 189 or six for two, still plenty of headroom left. There's also a panoramic roof available. Here on the, wow, this brushed aluminum style, really clean and my favorite AC unit in the automotive industry. The user interface in the A5 is a little bit more simple still. Ah, great clicking sounds, awesome seat heating and so on. And also the drive select is, you know, with the haptic function, that's really great. 10 inch screen here since the facelift of the A5 family. Before you had a small screen without touch. Here now you have touch and then you had this MMI control knob. This one is gone now. So everything with touch as for the infotainment system. But the menu itself is actually quite simple. Steering wheel, 
is not too small, but also not too large. And with real buttons at the steering wheel to control also here for the volume. And then you also have the digital instruments. So overall, I'm really happy with the user interface and the clean design. Yeah, just the screen looks a little bit attached. And here with the armrest, also great build quality, well attached. And then here you connect your smartphone um, with one USB-C charger or then here inductive charging pad. And the digital instruments, they are not too different actually. You can change the views something and you can also have the map in between here. So clear to read, great digital instruments. Here the main infotainment system in the A5. Once again, I think that the whole system is kept relatively simple. You also have the car internal GPS, which also works. Oh, there's central. Yeah, actually quite fine. That's fine. So in here, Apple CarPlay integration looks like this. So overall, I'm really happy with the infotainment system because it's kept simple actually. And here also how you control the car settings. Here's the drive select with the suspension. We have the adaptive suspension here and here without air suspension. That's also one of the difference in the A7. You can get air suspension. And here in the rear leg room, yeah, it does exactly fit with this recess here. Um, yes, I could sit a little bit more forward when I would also push the, the steering wheel more in, but when someone very tall is sitting in the front, it doesn't leave much leg room here in the rear. Of course, here the Sportback is better than the Coupe version of the F5. Um, headroom wise, does work. That is no problem. And you know, the seating comfort in the rear is actually quite decent. Once again, if you're five tall adults, it is a problem. I see a huge middle tunnel. So, mm, yeah, I mean, it's somewhat okay, but not vast <laughs> offering of space. This will be different in the A7. Here we go now with the A7. A little bit more headroom and definitely more legroom. So this is a substantial difference. So if you want to drive with tall adults in the front plus tall adults in the rear, and of course, the A7 is the better choice. Longer wheelbase means more legroom. And the overall seating comfort here is also indeed better in the rear. Um, almost a little bit executive alike. Um, of course, you have also an armrest in the A5 here. The middle area is a little bit taller or a little bit wider. You can see it exactly right here. And you also have a more sophisticated climate unit here in the rear. But big middle console here, two USB-C chargers. So here, yeah, I mean, you have this split, but you can indeed use this one also with five tall adults in the rear. The middle part is not as comfortable. Also, headroom-wise is close. So this only for short periods of time, but four tall adults is absolutely great. Now the Audi A7 interior here in the front, also very clean layout. Also a 10-inch screen on the top, but here it is integrated and doesn't pop out. And the past problem that this one here could be like squeezed and pressed, Obviously, they have also fixed that build quality wise, so that is better. Still, a lot of high gloss piano like I used. Hmm, that's not so that cool. And also, you have the additional screen in the lower part. I do prefer a manual climate unit. However, for a touchscreen temperature solution, it is somewhat cool. Um, yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, so, I'm fine with it, although I would prefer the manual dial. So the user interface in the A5 to me a little bit more classic and simple, but here also a beautiful layout. The interior build quality and everything is just superb. There's like two USB-C chargers here. So yeah, really happy with that one. Also still you have volume jog and real buttons at the steering wheel to control the digital instruments. And the seating comfort, well, First of all, once again, 1m89, 602, also a lot of headroom. There's also a panoramic roof available as an option here. You do have a little bit more comfort, especially when you are very tall. If you're less tall than me, then maybe it doesn't make the biggest difference, but you feel a little bit more sophistication. Digital instruments, actually not a big difference then between the two vehicles. And also here, once again, a very good overview. Oh. That is with high-speed automatic driving. It goes better, yeah, more rather like this. Also kept very simple this menu and also fast enough. Apple CarPlay integration here looks like this actually. So very well usable. You can also individualize your hotkeys on the left side. Here we do have the air suspension. That means that in the drive select, when you, for example, go to dynamic mode, the suspension is going down and it's raising again when you're in a comfort or in the Auto mode. And what's really interesting is when both screens here play together, for example, you type a 
address search here and then you see the lower part switches to this keyboard keyboard key, keyboard come on <laughs> switches to this keyboard or you can also write them in here but you can also of course always use the voice input to get the gps running oh well i don't understand so many extras in this vehicle but it doesn't even have a rear view camera of course it offers one but it's not included at least here in this eu spec so in germany you have to check that you do get a rear view camera gladly for all our friends from the united states a rear view camera is mandatory anyway by law it should be the same in germany or at least i mean an a7 at that price should always include a rear view camera no matter which market i got the key <laughs> and here i can open the trunk here by pressing twice it's a very impressive setup here, isn't it? And you can see, let's see if I'm in the highest position. Yeah, I can pretty much stand underneath both of them. And the trunk difference is here we have 465 liters with the A5. And you can see a meter of 40 inches hardly fits in here. So the width, the A7 is that much wider in the trunk. And the length here is one meters and six or 42 inches. And here, the A7 is that much longer. That's a basic difference and you can very well access everything. That's the cool thing with the sport bags. And of course, you can also fold the seats. You can reach over here uh, and then fold it. There's no um, mechanism there. Reach over right there. But overall, so well usable like an estate. If we now get to the A7, where we have 70 liters more at 535 liters. And as I said, this is what you have more in length and about this is what you have more in width. So a little bit more flexible, a little bit more storage, also easy from that access. Um, and you can see, because the car is a little bit longer, also with the overhangs, I have to reach over here a little bit further. You can, of course, also do that from the rear. Overall, both are very, very well usable. Here, just a little bit more trunk. And now, yeah, I have the gas struts as help. <laughs> Engine-wise, well, it really depends on which model you pick. You have two liter four cylinders and three liter six cylinders on the petrol side and also on the diesel side. And it really also depends on the country. For example, the S7 and the S5 Sportback in Europe is diesel since a few years now. Why would they do that? So we had to go for like, let's say a right size engine here, three liter V6, 340 horsepower for the A7. You can still get it in the A7, but not in the S7 in Europe, but in the US, you can still get the S7 also with the petrol engine. And the same also goes for the S5 Sportback. Here, this is then the 2-liter 4-cylinder engine, around 200 horsepower. You can also get around 250 horsepower spec. And also in the US, you can still get S5 petrol engine. Only the S5 convertible you can still get as petrol in Europe. So strange decision by Audi, but in a way, this was for us the best comparison because the A7 will most people buy then with this engine with a 3D V6 and the A5 most people will buy with the 2 liter 4 cylinder petrol engine. So these are let's say the most common specs. If you would have compared the S5 would have been possible in Europe because then it would have been diesel. So that's the reason for the engine choice today. Let's go. Let's go.